The Coindesk Spotlight is brought to you by Nexo, the place to earn on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and more. All right, earlier this week at the SALT conference, I had a chance to speak with Jack Jobin Putra, founder and managing partner at Future Perfect Ventures. Jack made a name for herself as an early investor of the internet and as an early investor of the blockchain space since 2013. If you want to know where she thinks we are in the development cycle of Web 3.0 and where to invest, you might want to hear her advice. Have a listen. <laughs> Well, over the last year, we've seen huge growth in the sector, as you've been covering, uh, and, and we really hit an inflection point of more institutional adoption, more consumer adoption, but we're still at a very small percentage of the world's population that actually has a crypto wallet that interfaces with cryptocurrencies. Uh, but whenever we see surveys of institutions or individuals, they all say they want more exposure to cryptocurrency. And digital assets generally. And so the next five years, I think, are going to be the golden age of investing in, in, in that tipping point of how do we create applications? No, no. Okay. How do we create oh, yeah. the infrastructure so that all 7 billion people in the world or close to it have a crypto wallet eventually and uh, can buy, hold, uh, sell uh, cryptocurrency as well as digital assets? We've seen NFTs grow uh, over the last year. There is a lot of exchanges that are emerging, a lot of data that needs to be mined and, and analyzed around the activity that's happening. So all of that infrastructure is what I'm most interested in. And what are the parallels you're seeing from Web 1, Web 2, and now Web 3 in terms of where you want to invest in? Where are we uh, right now in the cycle? Well, it very much depends on the day. Okay. <laughs> so when I first got into the crypto sector uh, in, in 2013, I would often say we're in 1993, 1994 internet. Uh, still very clunky. We really only had uh, Bitcoin and, and a few other uh, crypto assets. Uh, uh, blockchain infrastructure was in its infancy. Uh, transactions were slow. Uh, interfacing with wallets wasn't easy um, and and so it's not accessible for the average person um, and and we're still actually uh, in, in in that stage uh, but we've now moved to the fact that like we, we now have uh, people on on the street buying nfts asking about nfts people asking how do I buy ethereum um, and and that reminds me of um, you know 2000 uh, internet uh, when when people started buying, you know, make books on Amazon, uh, started thinking about, wow, I can actually transact, I can actually use email, um, and and I think we're we're at that stage now. And so, if you look at what's happened since 2000 in the internet um, to where we are now, I, I still think we have all of that growth ahead of us in, in digital assets and so watching. You're looking to invest in the crypto space. You mentioned you're looking for. Uh, layer ones or layer twos or an interoperability. Tell me a bit about some of those companies that you're looking at. So our thesis has always been about a multi-blockchain world. Um, I look at uh, uh, this whole thesis of decentralization. Um, that, that was why I started Future Perfect Ventures. I thought we were beyond the phase of, of having um, these only kind of server to um, to computer uh, cloud connectivity. We will always have that, but uh, but given how much accessibility, how far technology has come, how fast processing power has developed, and that really enabled Bitcoin and, and blockchain technology to take hold, uh, we now can have peer-to-peer -peer connectivity in a way that we haven't been able to do before because the technology wasn't there, people weren't on mobile phones. Um, and, and so uh, I believe that uh, we're now at that phase where um, so that layer one has been built out. It, it continues to be built out. It's, it's still being scaled. Um, but that layer two of, of scalability, interoperability. Um, so I believe different blockchains, going back to that thesis of um, multi-blockchains, different 
blockchains and layer ones will serve different purposes. So we've never been uh, maximalists. <laughs> uh, love Bitcoin because it, it, it's, it's the most proven, the most secure blockchain out there. But if we look at Ethereum, how it's become this uh, reserve currency uh, for DeFi, for NFTs, uh, we're seeing Solana take hold. A lot of DeFi being built on top of Solana. So just like with the internet, we don't have just one company um, that, that serves every application and every purpose. Uh, we're going to have different blockchains and then we'll have layer twos that um, uh, connect to those as well as interoperate. So we're an investor. So and some of the, the protocols that come to mind are Polkadot yes. in, in my mind. Are there other ones that you would uh, like to highlight? Yes, uh, that is, is a great one that we, we uh, were early investors in. Uh, we also uh, are investor, early investors in the graph. Uh, protocol, um, and they have been hard at work the last few years building out the the Google layer, that that search layer across blockchain. So then, uh, any um, any developer can actually uh, pull data from different blockchains. And and you know what's what's beautiful about this sector is that it's open source, and and um, unlike this this uh, kind of zero-sum environment that, that we've seen in, in um, business before and even the internet where uh, control of the data uh, was, was uh, how companies built moats, uh, we're, we're seeing every major blockchain uh, work with the graph so that uh, their data and, and the transactions that happen on their blockchains can be pulled so that new applications can be built. Um, and, and so that's one that we're very excited about and they've been growing um, uh, just qu very quickly as we've seen every, you know, as the number of transactions grow, uh, the, the graph benefits from that. And this kind of mirrors one of your early investments in the internet, you mentioned Yodely. Yes. Maybe you could draw some of the parallels. Yes, yes. Yodely uh, was actually my first ever venture investment in, in 2000. And uh, they started off as a single sign-in for uh, the web. So, I mean, we still have this problem with passwords, right? Uh, trying to remember <laughs> our passwords. And they had this, this thesis that if we just had one single sign-in, that would be great. Now, what happened, though, uh, uh, was that they were very early around that. Um, and, and there wasn't enough consumer adoption with the internet. Uh, then I, I mentioned 2000 and where we are with crypto, right? And, and, and so what they pivoted to was uh, serving as a single sign-in for uh, financial institutions, for their customers. And so they became the first financial API, uh, Plaid, we, uh, which um, uh, was about to be acquired by Visa last year is the next generation, but Yodley was, was the first company to do that. They went public, they've been acquired. Um, and, and so that experience and that success with that investment, that infrastructure layer, that middleware layer of how do you connect um, all the pieces uh, of, of how do you connect consumers to institutions, um, that is where we're very focused on, and, and, and you, you picked up on it right away when I described it. Uh, I believe every, every technology follows a similar adoption curve. What we're seeing in digital assets and crypto is a faster acceleration because it is so global and open source.